Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about cell division. We're going to focus on mitosis and really the whole cell cycle. This is a general overview, so if you are struggling with this or you feel like you need more information, don't be afraid to go dig deeper or look up some other resources. I'm also happy to suggest resources to, to help add to this. Um, so we all started out as a cell smaller than the period of the, at the end of a sentence. And now, look at you. Cell division explains how you got from a single cell to where you are now and how you maintain all of those cells. So we all started out as a zygote. That's going to be a fertilized egg cell. That cell divided into two and then into two to four, then into eight, and so on and so forth. Now, cells have different reasons for dividing. If you're a single-celled organism, like the amoeba in that diagram, and you divide, you've also reproduced. Um, that's a form of asexual reproduction, so both organisms will be clones or genetically identical. If you're a multi-celled organism, when your cells divide by mitosis, it's for growth and development, so going from that fertilized egg to an adult, and also for repair and replacement. So your cells get used up, damaged, um, just normal wear and tear, or if you're injured, you're going to need to be able to replace those cells. And so mitosis is how you do that. Now, if a cell is going to divide, you've got to think about what is it that you actually need to copy. Um, DNA is going to be one of the major things that needs to be copied. And that's because, if you remember, DNA is the instructions for making all of the proteins and other things that you're going to need for a functional cell. Um, you're also going to need some organelles. Um, you need cell membrane, and you need some enzymes to be functional right at the beginning. And so, before a cell starts dividing, it needs to make sure that it has all of the things necessary to be viable. Now when we talk about mitosis, usually we focus on just that one aspect of the cell cycle. But most of the time, cells are not dividing. They're going through the other part of the cell cycle called interphase. Um, so we'll talk briefly about all of the different parts of interphase and then we'll look more closely at mitosis, which is the actual division of the nucleus. So G1, or GAP1, um, is going to be the first part of interphase. Then you have S, then G2, and then you go through mitosis and cytokinesis. Now some cells after cytokinesis will go into G0, so kind of they're just normal, hanging out, doing their cell thing, um, and then go into G1 if they get signals to divide. Now, in order to go through those phases, you also have to go through these checkpoints. Um, you don't want cells dividing if there's no cause for it, right? Because if you have cells dividing out of control, that's actually cancer. Now, at the G1 checkpoint, so you have that gap 1, and if you look here in gap 1, you have um, cellular contents besides the chromosomes are being duplicated. You're also checking, you know, you're growing, making sure that the cell has everything it needs. Um, so before you even leave that stage and start dividing or start going through the rest of this, you're going to have a checkpoint. And at that checkpoint, you're going to make sure that you have enough nutrients, that the, pos uh, the correct growth factors are present, and you're going to be looking for DNA damage. If all things check out, then you can move forward and go through synthesis, which is exactly what it sounds like. You copy all of your DNA. Then you'll go into G2, and there again, you're going to make sure the cell is large enough, the organelles have been replicated, um, and that the DNA has been copied. And then the last is going to be that metaphase checkpoint. Again, you're making sure that there's um, all the chromosomes are lined up appropriately and the spindles have been able to attach. If at any point a cell does not pass that checkpoint, it can't go any further. 
And that, again, is a good thing because you don't want cells dividing and making more copies of themselves if there's damage, if they're not large enough, if there's no reason for it. So again, if we're looking at those stages, interphase encompasses G1, S, and G2. In that gap one stage, you have the cell growing and preparing for replication. In synthesis, the DNA is replicated. It's a big job. And then G2, that's where it finishes off and prepares for cell division. In mitosis, the main thing that's happening there is the contents are dividing. The nucleus is dividing with all of that nuclei, all the DNA. Um, and then cytokinesis is kind of usually gets added into that mitosis phase you have um, where the cytoplasm is divided. Now interphase, we usually don't give it enough attention, but a lot of really important things need to happen. Um, DNA replication, organelle duplication, cell growth, so you need to be large enough, transcription and translation of important proteins, you need to obtain nutrients, and you have to have respiration going on in order to generate ATP. Um, an easy way to remember that is the mnemonic doctor, so D for DNA replication, organelle, cell, transcription, obtain nutrients, and respiration. Okay. During S phase, DNA is copied. We just reviewed DNA replication. In mitosis, during that first stage, all of that DNA that's been copied is actually going to condense to form chromosomes. So those nice pictures you see of chromosomes, DNA only looks like that during mitosis. Normally, it's all unwound or open um, in the form of chromatin. And that's good because you can use it that way. But if you're going to be dividing, you want to condense it so that it's just organized. So again, this is an electron micrograph of actual chromosomes. So they do kind of, that's what they look like. Um, but they only look like that when a cell is dividing. Now, if you look here at this cell on the left, that's what the nucleus normally looks like with this set, the DNA unwound or in the form of chromatin. And then in this cell on the right, you can see those condensed chromosomes becoming visible. Now, to make it even more con confusing, you have a chromatid. So chromatin is unwound DNA. Chromosomes are when that wound DNA becomes tightly packaged. They're actually wound around something called histones. Um, and if they're replicated, you have sister chromatids. So during mitosis, at the beginning stage, you have duplicated DNA. So, you know, if this is chromosome three, you have one copy and then another copy of chromosome three. Um, they're gonna be held together by a centromere. So all sorts of C words for you. So you have your centromere, and then this would be one chromosome, chromatid, and this would be another chromatid, and we would call the whole thing a chromosome. Um, once those separate from each other, then each individual, individual chromatid becomes a chromosome. Confusing. Um, let me stop doing that. <laughs> All right, so again, chromosome, during S phase, it replicates, so now the whole thing is called a chromosome with individual chromatids, sister chromatids, attached at the centromere. Um, and then after mitosis, they separate and become chromosomes again. All right, so you may want to pause me here for a second and see how much you can write down about mitosis. See if you can come up with five things you remember about mitosis. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at the different phases of mitosis and how you can try to identify those. All right, so you have interphase, 
Um, and this is where chromosomes are unwound, the DNA, um, the genes are active and being used, something called a nucleolus is visible, um, DNA replicates, you're making copies of itself, um, and this is what it looks like if you're actually looking at it in real life. So you'll notice that like nucleus is kind of dense and grainy, you can't really see individual chromosomes. During prophase, the chromosomes condense, so they coil around histones and become visible. Um, remember, they're chromatids joined at the centromere. Um, and you'll see the nuclear membrane start to disappear, and those centrioles, so those guys over there at the ends, or the poles, um, they move to opposite poles, and they have microtubules that are going to start um, attaching, or spindle fibers that are going to start growing. Again, this is kind of what it looks like, so you can see those chromosomes condensing and becoming visible. Metaphase, the middle, everything lines up in the middle, so chromosomes line up along the equator of the cell. Um, those microtubules are going to continue to grow and they're going to attach themselves to the centromeres of the uh, chromosomes. This one's pretty easy to identify on the, those um, cell images because you can see that, that kind of metaphase plate, everything lining up in the middle. Anaphase, I remember A for away. Here you have those chromatids separating and being pulled towards opposite poles. And again, it's kind of easy to identify that one because you can really just see them being pulled towards the edges. Um, that was an animation that doesn't appear to be working, sorry. <laughs> telophase and cytokinesis. So telophase, this is where those sister chromatids reach the poles and are now, again, called chromosomes. The spindles start to break down and the nuclear membrane and nucleolus reform. Um, so you have two individual nuclei now. Chromosomes start to unwind so that they can be used again. And then cytokinesis is where the cytoplasm constricts and you actually separate into two daughter cells. Um, something called a cleavage furrow sometimes forms in, an well, forms in animal cells. Um, it's just what it sounds like. It looks like cleavage. Um, because it's kind of pinching off between those two cells, and you can see those nuclei starting to reform. Here you can see something called a metaphase plate. I mean, sorry, <laughs> the cell plate forming in between those two cells. Um, here again you have an electron micrograph showing the cleavage furrow. Um, you have this kind of pinching in. Here are some images of whitefish embryo or blastula. These are used often for uh, mitosis studies because those cells are actively dividing in an embryo. They're dividing all the time. Um, so it's a good opportunity to see cells undergoing mitosis. And because fish have external fertilization and external development, they're pretty easy to obtain. Um, in a plant cell, here you can see um, that cell plate forming, um, and that's going to form a cell wall that separates the two new plant cells. Um, it's too bad these are not working, sorry. Um, and here is a plant cell. This is where you just have those spindle fibers and nuclei um, selectively stained. In the end, you have two new daughter cells. Um, both get two exact copies. They're, both are two identical copies of the original cell. So mitosis, remember, you divide and form two identical daughter cells. They have the same DNA. They're basically clones of each other. Um, here's an example of something called an onion root tip. So if whitefish splashula are commonly used to observe um, mitosis in animal cells, you'll find um, root tip 
root tip squashes are good for looking at mitosis in um, plant cells. Again, you'll find a lot of cells dividing because the roots tend to, to grow continuously, whereas other parts of the uh, plant aren't actively growing all of the time. And you can see most of these cells, like this guy, is in interphase. This one here, I would say that looks like a really good example of anaphase. You can see them being pulled apart. Here's a great example of, mito uh, of metaphase. Um, here you can see a cell that's in prophase. Um, and then, let's see, great. This one is probably a really like, late telophase. So, remember, you're going to be interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. Um, you can remember that as PMAT, usually is the, a good way to remember that. Um, please make another two cells is another good kind of way to remember the order. Notice that there's two kind of prophases. We give these names, they're happening in real time, like it's a, it's a process. So we give them names so it's easy to describe what's going on, um, but it's sometimes, you know, they can be in between phases. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, like I said, this is an overview, kind of review of what's going on at each stage and you're going to do some practice with application.